Hey, we live, baby. All right, there you go. Cheers now a little bit. Hey, y'all. Hey, guys, welcome to virtual yoga session number cuatro, number four, hot water cornbread. Um, I named this hot water cornbread based off of... Back in high school, I used to have a nickname that I gave myself, and for my email, my gamer tag for Xbox, it was Hot Water Cornbread. Um, it was also, ironically, when I started really getting, or trying to get into yoga, when I was 17. Um, so, I'm good to today's practice, be mindful of your body. Um, it's going to be more of a beginner, foundation sort of flow, at the request by a few people. Um, so let's go ahead and start. I'm only give us one minute. All right. So let's start in a comfortable seated position, uh, wherever that may be. Just this camera real quick. Whoop. There you go. So whatever the comfortable position is to you, I want to go ahead and cross my legs. You can take your, take your neck, legs out long. You can lay down if you want to. You can sit in a figure four. That's completely fine. But wherever you are, just close down your eyes and just breathe naturally. In through the nose, out through the mouth. One more, in through the nose, out through the mouth. So when, we, so when we're breathing through using our different means of the respiratory system, I really want you to think where you're breathing from. Are you breathing from your abs? Are you breathing from your shoulders? Whatever that is, let's see. Let's, let's try a different method. So if you're in a comfortable seated position, you sit up strong. Your shoulders are relaxed away from your ears. Your lungs are upright as much as you can, because if you have a good upright position, you'll be able to take in more air. Surely breathe through the diaphragm. So what that looks like is not breathing like, like when people are kids. It's more of using that core strength. Fill the diaphragm, it's a muscle. Fill that muscle, fill it with air. I'll be full with air. And bring it through the mouth. Hey, use that diaphragm, breathe through it, into your nose. And out through the mouth. Two one more, into the nose. Abs should be tight, strong, and out through the mouth. On our next inhale, exhale exercise, take a natural uh, noise that you make if you're an app. You know, humans technically, you would say that. <laughs> but let's, let's consider maybe you're an elephant today, or a horse, or a gorilla, or a parakeet. Whatever natural animal noise you want to make, that's fine. I'll probably be using a horse. So enter the nose. After the mouth. <laughs> Let's change it up. Change your animal up. And do the nose. Not do the mouth. <laughs> the main thing that you're inhaling all the O2 to enrich all the red blood cells, all the different nutrients in your body, getting all that good stuff. And you're exhaling all that toxic waste, all that CO2, all those dead cells, all those old nutrients. Think about Every single breath you take, every single cell, fiber, atom in your body exchanging with oxygen. That is why I decided to teach them the So with that being said, exactly let us begin our practice. So keeping our eyes closed still, we're going to do a nice and nice little back bend. So if you're laying down, just go ahead and stand up. If your legs are long, 
Um, you can go ahead and put them back in. Also, if you have a, if you're uh, not comfortable seat or in a, if you're not comfortable sitting in a cross-legged position, um, what I normally have, what I don't have with me right now, you can actually get like a blanket, like I'll do the full dog bed. So if you're not comfortable in that position, you can you put a blanket underneath you to elevate your hips. It's not really doing a lot because it's not really a blanket. Um, you can get a pillow to put underneath right, your hip sitting bones. You want more of a stretch. You can actually put it also underneath um, your feet. Um, just some different variations. Uh, I know for a while I, I needed to have um, like a block underneath my butt on each, not my butt, but my um, hips so I can sit up right. So whatever you need, that is completely fine. All right. So once you've got your blanket or whatever to put underneath your hips, let's close our eyes back down again. And breathe. Hands are heart center. So just placing your palms together, not pressing them hard, just lightly touching them together. And bring it to your sternum right where you just feel a little hard spot, like right in the middle. Even if you're a little bit uh, obese, you should feel like a hard spot. I want you to really lightly press your thumbs against that spot. We're going to be hands to heart for a few times during this practice. So I just really want you to get that centered right in the middle. Yeah. So pretty much right in between uh, your pecs and above like your little tongue. Just so feel a little hard bone. So our next inhale, we're going to reach up our arms overhead. So inhale, arms high overhead. And breathe. So in this position, uh, maybe it is really important more than anything to try to tilt your pelvic bone up just a little bit so, so you can engage that core. Your arms may not go completely straight up. Like, mine's are not completely straight up. The main thing I want you to do is pretend like someone has a little lasso on your middle fingers, pulling you straight up. Try to bring your biceps towards your ears. If it helps, you can turn your palms towards the front and look that way and try to bring your ears or biceps towards your ears. But I also want you to keep that chest strong because you might want to like, mm, like sometimes I want to just lay back. Like, mm, I'm reaching, I'm reaching. But really puff that chest out just a little bit. Um, Tilting that pelvis up to engage that core. Lasso pulling on your fingertips all while still breathing. If you want to change your hands to have palms facing forward, that's fine. Belly want you to reach and breathe. Even if you're trying to reach really hard, also try to relax your shoulder blades just a little bit down. So you're not like shrugging your shoulders. Like you're still reaching high, but you may shrug your shoulders down a little bit, so you're still reaching up and breathe. So chest puffed out, a little bit of pelvic tilt, fingertips are what you really want to, you want to extend upwards, you really want to extend those upwards. The sitting bones in, you, in your hips are grounded, so really energetically think about your actual hip bones seeking to the ground, but also your fingertips are raising up toward the stratosphere. Let's do an inhale. And exhale. One more inhale. Reach, 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 reach. Exhale, relax, break down. And exhale, hands back at heart center. So you should feel a little burning in the arms. <laughs> you all right, Louie? <laughs> you have an apple tree, apple's fall, Louie. So back at hands to heart center, chest still puffed out. Core engaged. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, reach up, arms high overhead. Feel like someone's pulling. Uh, pull, 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 pull. And exhale. Listen very closely. Grab your left left wrist with your right hand. Pull up and over. And breathe here. So what what you need to do on this pose is really root through that left sitting bone to keep your uh, left side body extended long. You're pulling over, but more importantly, you're pulling up and then over. So you'll feel more of a left side body extension versus a right. 
I really want to, they will keep you upright, so you shouldn't be leaning forward or backwards. You should be still in that same position, like you're in the arms overhead. So inhale. And exhale. Inhale, reach back in the arms overhead. And exhale, hands at heart center. All right. So let's go ahead and get our left side. So inhale, reach arms high overhead. And exhale, we're going to pull to the left. So grabbing, excuse me, grabbing your uh, right wrist with your left hand. I'm going to pull up and over. And breathe here. Remember, you're, you're putting weight or you're really sticking it down with that right hip. Pulling up and over. Right side bodies are getting a nice little stretch. Core is engaged. That's very important along with that right hip sticking down. I'm going to pull up and over. So you're, it's more important that you're straight, upright, vertical versus being as far as you can to the left. One more inhale. Stay for the exhale. And inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, hands on heart center. Good. We're going to do one more bend while we're sitting or seated. So inhale, reach your arms up high overhead. Bring your tips. Be a pull. Ooh, like I'm trying to get up on the Tom Cruise movie. I'm about to fall off the cliff. I'm reaching as far as I can. Uh, exhale, cactus your arms. Do a nice little back bend. And breathe. So really pull through that chest. If like you're doing a pull up, draw your shoulder blades together. And gaze up a little bit towards the sky. So your gaze is like, feel like you're really, you pull back, really pulling through the chest. Nice little back bend. You can lean, you can lean back a little bit, engage that core, and then pull through your chest. Relaxing your shoulders away from your ears. One more inhale. Stay for the exhale. Inhale, reach back up for arms over here. And exhale, hands to heart. All right, so we should have our arms burning just like a little bit, because my arms hurt. <laughs> All right. So let's do that sequence one more time. Actually, I'm going to put this like underneath my feet, my sides of my feet are hurting. There you go. So back our hands to heart center. Inhale, reach, reach, reach. If you're trying to get the last cookie on the cookie. The cookie jar, reach, uh, I'm too short. And exhale, hands on our center. Inhale, reach up, reach up. Core engaged, nice little pelvic tilt, sinking through those, uh, those sitting hip bones. And exhale, grab your left wrist, pull over to the right. Sing, staying seated in that left sitting bone, pull up and over. Exhale, hands on heart center. Let's head to the left. Grab that right wrist. Pull over, grounding through your right sitting bone. Ground, ground, up and over. And inhale, back of the arms overhead. Exhale, cactus your arms for a nice little back bend. Pull through your chest. Whoop. Inhale, back arms overhead. And exhale, hands on heart center. Let's hit that sequence one more time. So nice, couple seated position, hands on heart center. Inhale, reach up, arms high overhead. Engage that core. It's more important to be, you have your uh, body upright versus having your arms upright. Just try to reach as far as you can to engage in that core. Exhale, pull over to the right, up and over. Pull, pull, left side body is extended as much as it can. Inhale, back and arms overhead. Let's go over to the left side. Pull over to the left, grabbing that right wrist. Sitting bone on your right is sunk. It's nailed to the ground, rooted into the ground. Inhale, back and arms overhead. Exhale, pretend like you're doing a pull up. Pull to the chest. Inhale, back and arms overhead. And exhale, hands on heart center. Good. 
All right, if you're in a comfortable seated position, let's move over to being on all fours. That is a once. <laughs> like it actually might be a godsend this dirty <laughs> So right now we are in tabletop position. Or I might refer to, refer to this also as all fours or tabletop. And just breathe here. So, so with this, with your feet, you can have them curled in or to the top of your feet or curled in, depending on your preference. I like to have my feet curled in so I can have more um, structure and stability in case I got to do like a downward facing dog action. Right now we're just in tabletop. Tomorrow. Really extend through the crown of your head, like really pull through the crown of your head. Knees are met with the, actually, knees are hit with the part along your hands. And your shoulders are stacked over your wrists. Really dig through those fingertips and breathe. Shoulders are relaxed away from your ears. So, you like you're pulling through with your forehead or the temple of your head. Core is engaged. So you're not like you're raising your hips or anything like that. So if you're right, used to regular knee pain, knee plank, really, you know, gaze the core like you don't move too many ways. What's a knee plank? One more inhale and exhale. All right, next inhale, cow. Drop the belly, shift your gaze up towards the sky, and breathe here. Remember, the feet can be any way you need them to be. Main thing with this pose is that you're pushing away from the mat versus pulling towards the mat. This is gonna come up later on in the actual practice. So cow, hips are being drawn towards the sky while belly is being drawn down to the earth. Pushing away from the mat, relax your shoulders away from your ears. Pretend like somebody is trying to push, actually energetically, actually physically pushing your belly down, but from your back. And the lower, the more of a push that is, the higher it has to go. And breathe. So choir is a lot of actual glutinous um, <laughs> uh, butt motion. So really engage that butt. Like gluteus max, if that's the correct terminology. So more inhale. And exhale in the cat. Round the spine. Now you're in more of a pulling action. And breathe here. Draw your chin toward your chest. We're still like somebody um, has you on a string, but the string is like right in the middle where your actual sternum is. And you're pulling, you're actually pulling your body up. Up like a fish hook if you're pulling a fish, but it's only around that little sternum area, that T6 and T7 area. If you know your uh, human anatomy, which I barely do. Cool. So it requires a lot of actual pelvic motion. The more you uh, actually tilt your pelvic in, the more of a bend you'll have, or um, the curve of the spine, to really pull up. But see, your feet are wherever comfortable, curl in or to the top of the toes. Pull, pull. You should even be feeling a little bit of fingertip action, um, or a little bit of your hands losing a little bit of the weight because I'm pulling so much. You're pulling so much up. More inhale. Stay for the exhale. And inhale on the cat. Our cow. My fault. And breathe here. Remember dropping the belly. Hips are raising up towards the sky. You can do a little bit of a dancing cow motion if you need to. Shake that booty. Eight, eight. And breathe. The more you try to shift your gaze up towards the sky, like actually having the back of your head trying to reach it towards your actual back, the more of a bend you'll have in your actual stomach. Or a nice little um, stomach belly drop. More inhale and exhale, you're pulling. Pull, pull to the middle of the spine. Inhale, cow. Dropping that belly. Just make gaze up towards the sky. Exhale. Cat. Now take this, um, whatever pace you want to do. I want you to do five cows and five cats. 
Whoever picks that is a you, you can go ahead. Might get a few more just because. <laughs> Let's go at a nice even pace. Where you really feel, I want you really to feel it at those points where it's busy. If you feel it any other place, then take a minute. <laughs> And I get yourself real life. Or take child's pose if you need to. And once you're done your five cows with five cats, just find yourself in a neutralized tabletop position. And just breathe. So let's do an inhale together. Inhale. And exhale, exhale an animal noise. <laughs> Inhale. Exhale, animal noise. Once you do your animal noise, we're gonna find ourselves in the child's pose. So curl the feet in, or like to the tops of your feet. I can actually curl my toes in. A lot of people will take this a child's pose. You'll have their, they'll actually flip to the top of their toes and sink their uh, hips down to their heels. But actually, because my ankles are so tight, I modify this by spreading my knees out mat width apart. I'll keep my um, toes curled in so I don't have any pressure on the ankles. Sink my uh, chest toward the ground so it's gonna, so my hips are a little bit elevated. My temple, I won't, I won't be able to really do it while talking, but my temple is on the ground as well. My arm just stretch out long overhead. And breathe here. So is child's pose at any point, um, I should do this earlier, but um, at any point in the practice that you feel comfortable and you take a break, child's pose is perfect. Uh, this is the modified child's pose, of course, with my uh, toes curled in. Uh, my hips still kind of sink toward my heel. My uh, knees mat width apart. My arms stretch overhead to my fingertips are reaching as far as I can, and then all the way past the top of my hips. The regular child's pose is a lot of push people do. Um, their toes are flipped to the top, or pretty much to the top of their toes. They cross the feet over, or whatever have you. They're sticking down that way. You can take any sort of motion you want to do. You can massage the temple of your forehead back and forth, roll back and forth. You can just try to do a nice little arm stretch, or reach to the top of your mat. But wherever you are, if you feel any pressure, um, just think about finding a block or a blanket or a pillow and put it wherever you need. You know, for my knees, for child's pose, I will put them like right underneath it and it feels better. And then also I'll put like a blanket between my hips and my ankles and like just sit back on it. So then I lose a lot of that pressure. Um, you, can put, you can put a block underneath your feet. Um, I'm not really sure why we can do that, but apparently that works for some reason. The main thing, if, if your knees hurt or if your ankles are tight like mine, is to put like a little blanket um, underneath those. I don't really have one to put, but you'll be able to adjust you know, depending on your body. So right now we're still in child's pose. And inhale, back in the tabletop. All right, so right now we're in tabletop. Let me move this thing over. Ugh. Right now we're at tabletop. Now exhale, downward facing dog. Listen very carefully for this one. Downward facing dog, I want you to walk your hands about one or two inches in front of you. Lift your kneecaps off of the ground. And just hold it here. See what your body is just doing now. So your curl, your feet should be curled in from child's pose. I don't know if people can flip to the top of their teeth for child's pose. And then just keep it for downward facing dog, don't worry about it. So right now, we're in a weird little crouch. Think about where your hands are. It should be a little bit in front of your shoulders, like one or two inches before, well, depending on your body. Kneecaps are off of the ground. Weight is, into, weight is into the actual toes. And just think about where the weight is distributed as well, the fingertips. Really rooting through those fingertips. Now we're gonna get to a full expression. So straighten your knees out as much as you can. And put, so I'd make a little bit of a readjustment. So I am gonna draw my um, actual hands in the downward facing dog. But I make that adjustment. 
in this brief. So we're down facing dog. There's quite a few modifications in the team, so let's go ahead and go through all of them. So this is our first one for today. So go ahead and walk those calves out. Feet should be uh, mat width apart, actually uh, hip width apart, along with your hands. So if your heels do not reach the ground, don't worry about it. It'll get better. I haven't got ready yet, but I'm still get to one day. Knees or legs are straight. Really use those hips. Use those hips to pull even higher. Or help, help them higher up. Yeah, raise them higher to the world ground. Apologies about that. And push your hands so much to where your uh, abs sink toward your thighs. And breathe here. Biceps are an outward rotation. As much as you can, just try to pull outward. Really using those fingertips to grip into the mat. You walk back and forth. You're still going to adjust it to it. And breathing, you're still using a lot of uh, abdominal strength. The brain goes abs toward the thigh. Pretend like your hands are just trying to glue your abs toward those thighs. Then breathe here. One more inhale. Exhale. Inhale, walk your feet toward your hands. So your hands are framing your feet. And we're going to hang out in ragdoll. So breathe here. So right now we are in ragdoll. You can hang out here, or you can actually grab opposite elbows. Give you yourself a nice, let me look on this side. Give yourself a nice, generous bend so your tummy's actually laying on your thighs. Feet are mat width apart. And you can rock back and forth like you're doing some nice figure eights to upper body. And breathe. Head is hanging heavy. Weights to be distributed into the balls of your feet. And you're swaying back and forth. Back and forth. And breathe. Exhale, release the arms back down, keeping still keeping that nice generous bend in your knees wherever that is. Listen very closely before you do anything. We're gonna inhale up and standing at attention. Standing at attention, I want you to take at least 10 seconds to actually get up into an upright position, just like you're a regular human. Your eyes gonna be fully erect, your head's gonna be fully erect. I want you to take your sweet time getting there. Hinging at the hip or unhinging at the hips. Letting your head come up last. So let's do an inhale, staying at attention. So slowly rising up, breathe through the bottom of the feet. Head will come up last. Really using those hip muscles. Once you start finding your way, clear position, you're fully erect. Palms will be facing forward towards the front of the mat. Hips mat with the part, or feet, sorry. Feet hit with the part, chest whoosh, upright, abs engaged, whoosh, palms facing forward, whoosh, shoulders relaxed, square from the ears, whoosh, and looking straight forward. Walk back. Let's do an inhale and exhale. One more inhale and exhale. Inhale, slowly reach your arms up high overhead, and breathe. This is the same position we had um, when we were sitting down, except we were standing up. So besides having to weight to the balls of your feet, really point, I'll show you my feet, really put weight to all four parts of the feet. So think about big toe, pinky, and those heels. All right, really ground through. Really ground through those parts of the foot. All right, so feet are mapped apart. Inhale, reaching the arms higher overhead. Still keeping your uh, your pelvic slightly tilted in to gaze that lower abdomen, that lower core. Fingertips are being pulled up. God's trying to pull you up into that. Woo! Shoulder blades still relax away from the ears. Inhale, reach a little bit higher. 
and exhale, swan dive, swan dive into a forward fold. And breathe in the forward fold. So let's just relax here for a little bit. So the forward fold, not a, not a generous bend, but you know, a nice chill bend in the knees. You don't need to have your stomach resting on your uh, thighs. Hands are reaching towards the ground, so just towards it, not like having ball space. And like I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get my hands all the way through the soil. No. Just reaching towards. If it's easier, you can actually have your hands on your hips. That helps you bend even more. And with this pose, you're gonna be using a lot of your legs. All right, so a lot of those hamstrings. So the entire hamstrings really trying to help you out in this one. Miss breathe. If you have a strap, you can actually put it, wrap it around your feet. I don't really have one. You can like, and then actually pull it through. Try to pull your lower body towards your thighs. If your head is still hanging heavy. You're all shifting weight to the balls of your feet. This is the four corners of each foot. Really hinging at those hips. Try to draw your chest toward your knees. Just draw it toward it, not kidding. You know, just like, I'm trying to get it there. And also, your hand placement is also a nice key. Uh, you're welcome to place your hands on the back of your calves, back of your ankles, on your big toes if you're all the way down there. And just try to pull your body even closer. Just pull, pull, pull if you can. Wherever you're at. Head hanging heavy. And inhale in the half lift. So inhale in the half lift, placing your palms on either your shins or your thighs. I only put on my thighs so I can give myself a nice little position. Arms are placed on, I mean, your hands are placed on your on your thighs, but also are your shins, wherever your, your body is, <laughs> wherever your upper body is. And, but when you're pushing, you're extending your arms fully. Try to make that, uh, your back like a nice little table so you can uh, dish up some like, nice little gourmet soup. And breathe. So right now we're in half lift. Fully extending the arms. Shoulders relax away from your ears. Extending through the crown of the head. Way into the balls of your feet. Nice little bend in the knees if you have hyperextended knees. Breathe. Inhale. Exhale. Let's do one more. Inhale. And exhale into the knee plane. And breathe here. So I didn't mention knee plank, all fours, tabletop. It's all the same thing, pretty much. Um, you're doing the same actual actions. So shoulders stacked over the wrists, weight to the fingertips. Toes are either um, your foot to the top of the toes, or your toes curl under. Where that is, that is completely fine. Cores and gates. Just think about tightening your core. Uh, like in your mind, that probably will happen. Your body is really cool like that. And breathe. Let me sit a little bit more. Hips, and knees, and hands are all in the same uh, location in terms of the mat. All the same width. So one more inhale. And exhale, walk your hands a little bit in front of you, maybe one or two inches, depending on who you are. Lift your kneecaps off the ground into downward facing dog. So breathe here. If, you're, if your calves or your hamstrings are still tight, go ahead and walk it out. Other than that, let's try to do a nice little inhale. Exhale, I want you to stay, but push your, but then actually push your body, your hips even higher, which will bring your uh, uh, abs toward your thighs and pull your hips higher. And breathe here. If you can kind of feel it, try to make this back area, this little back right, right around the nape of the neck, into like a little pool. A nice little pool. Like a, like a little uh, divot, we call it. I think it's a divot. <laughs> All I'm pressing to the tips of your fingers. I know when I first started uh, doing downward dog, I went deep deeper into the pose. Uh, actually, the top of my mat. I um, was kind of cheating. It was the top of my mat. I would actually push against, I would crawl, I would actually grab the corners of my mat, push myself against it, so I get my um, body even more aligned with it. 
You know, once I felt like I got a good position, I would release it and get back. My parents just back into a nice downward facing zone. So you can, yeah, you can actually grab the corners of your mat so you can get deeper into the pose. Bicep will turn outwards. It's going to be a little, definitely going to feel a lot more in your arms when you turn your biceps outward. Breathe. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, walk your feet toward your hands. Exhale into a forward fold. Inhale into a half lift. And exhale into a nice forward fold. Inhale on a slowly, very slowly, take it like 10, 15, 18, 300 breaths if you need to. Inhale to slowly, slowly rise up, head coming up last. Hit unhinging at the hips. Just staying at attention. Exhale, hands are heart centered. Or using those thumbs to press through the sternum, that, that hard part of the bone or your chest. Inhale, raise your arms up high overhead, fingertips being pulled, being pulled by Rob Snyder, who's in heaven, waking up in heaven, number nine. And exhale, we do a nice little swan dive, or river dive you want to do. Do a forward pull. Right now we're in forward fold, a nice slight bend in the knees. Weight placed into the balls of your feet. You can grab whatever variation you had. You can grab your back of your legs or what have you. That's completely fine. Inhale and the half lift. Placing your palms on your thighs and your calves, extending to the crown of the head. Shoulders are relaxed away from your ears. And exhale into knee plank. Stacking shoulders over the wrists, hips over the knees. Inhale to hold your knee plank. Exhale, walk your hands just a little bit in front of you for a downward facing dog. And just breathe. Inhale. And exhale. So that's, that's one more. Inhale. Exhale, animal noise. Inhale, walk your hands toward your feet, or feet toward your hands. And exhale into a forward fold, wherever that is. Inhale in the half lift. And exhale in the forward fold, reaching toward your knees. Inhale, the standing out of tension. Ooh, run too fast, run too fast. Head coming up last. Palms facing the front of your mat. So just hang out here. So if you can get some water at this point, that's completely fine. Uh, we'll be closing out our practice fairly soon. But let's make sure we are getting hydrated where we need to or taking a cause pose to be mindful of your body. We're gonna go through that one more time and we're gonna relax into the Shavasana. Put our hands, hands are standing at attention. Once you've got your water. Exhale in the hands of heart center. Just relax. Relax. <laughs> I have a terrible yoga voice. It's like my regular voice, but I say yoga boy. Yoga words out of it. Inhale, reach up your arms high overhead. <sighs> Whitney Houston singing you a ballad about how great you are in heaven. And exhale, let's do a nice little swan dive or whatever dive into a forward fold, hinging at the hips. Inhale in the half lift, pressing against the thighs or the shins, wherever you're at. And exhale in the plank, or if you want to do, or in on the knee, or sorry, exhale on the uh, knee plank, or if you want to do a regular high intensity plank, that's fine. I'm gonna hang out knee plank. Inhale, hold your knee plank. Exhale, walk your hands a little bit, little woolly bit, that might. For a downward facing dog. Hey, Lily, you got it. Get that to me. Inhale, look forward. 
to let your feet meet your hands. Exhale on the forward fold. Inhale on the half lift. Exhale on the forward fold. And inhale slowly, slowly, slowly come up this thing. Attention on your head, come up less. Palms facing the forward. Feet rooted into the ground. There you go. So let's meet on our backs. So I want you to draw your knees toward your chest. Give yourself a nice big hug. Hugs, 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 hugs. Now send your right leg out long. And stack your left hip over your right. You keep your shoulders tacked into the ground, stapled into the ground. That is a terrible word, but that's all I can think about. You can tee out your arms, you can tack into your arms. I have to use my right hand when my when my left leg is stacked over my uh my right. I like to grab my right hand and press deeper into the pose, but also keeping my uh, both my shoulders tacked to the ground. And you may also look over to the left. Supine twist. The key to get deeper into this pose with that wall that wall is if I actually push your thighs down on the side. But you can keep it right here. Um, but really pushing down to those thighs, looking, setting your gaze over to the opposite side. Try to make sure your legs are still underneath me, correct? Not like all the way to the side. Like your right leg should still be right, right underneath you, know, like you're in Shavasana or laying down naturally. Should be all the way over to the left or right, right straight underneath. One more inhale. All right, so try to do a little bit of more of a deep. Whew. You can also, if you like, if you drew, you need to do your chest. You can just have both knees uh, bent and just do uh, two point twist that way. That feels better on your spine. So besides having your right leg out long, you can just have both both legs together. And looking over to the left, you can do it that way if you like to do as well. If you're having spine problems. But wherever you are, back in the center, give yourself a nice big hug. Hugs these all around. And send your left leg out long and stack your right leg over your left. And breathe. So teeing out the arms, pressing your left uh, hand into your right thigh, catching your arms, but make sure you're. Um, Shoulders are packed into the ground, stapled, glued, wherever. Wood glued, staple gun to the um, to the mat. And breathe. And also look over to the right side. You want to get more deeper into the pose. You can also, also take the variation in having your knees stacked over the top of each other so both legs are bent. Wherever it's feel comfortable for you. Left leg should be like right underneath your actual body like you're laying down. Shouldn't be over to one side or the other, just right in the middle. Oh, inhale. Oh, excuse me. Inhale. Give yourself a nice big hug again. And if you need to take any other pose before we recharge your boss in our corpse pose, that's completely fine. Or you want to do bridge pose or whatever. But if not, I'll meet you in the boss in the corpse pose. So legs out long, hands lying wherever they are, body just laying naturally, eyes are closed, Spill it down for a little bit, and breathe softly. I should do one more inhale together, one more inhale, so inhale, exhale out on noise. Not very soft. Eyes are closed. Eyelids are relaxed. Jaws are clenched. 
your eyes closed, calmly let sensation back to your body by wiggling the fingertips and the toes. Oh, but while keeping your eyes closed, you can move the eyelids around a little bit, a little shake. And roll over to the right side, in a fetal position. And push yourself back up, the eyes still closed. If you're in Shavasana, so that's really fine. Or I could be in a cross thinking position or have your legs out long. Hand to heart center, pressing against your sternum. Uh, sternum. Uh, even with all the cornbread in the world that my mom made, even all the silly camera tags, just a reminder that um, you know, when you go through and you really think about what you eat, what you symbolize with when you eat, what you put into your body, how you started with something, no matter what it is. Throughout the rest of your day today, be mindful of the small things you may eat versus the big things you may eat. Whatever that is, consuming whether it be gum or water, or it's a one o'clock in the afternoon uh, gin and tonic. 
know what your body is responding to it, our house is responding to it, whether it be negative, positive, or alternative. Thank you for joining me for this practice. No slip. If you guys have any questions or what have you, you may leave a comment on the video. Appreciate it. Bye.